Well, grace and peace, my beloved family. I pray that you are all remaining well and prospering in the power and the goodness of the Lord. Hey, I'm excited to bring you God's word today. Go ahead and get a pen or pencil and paper. Get your notepad out. Turn to that note section in your device. I want you to be able to follow along, take notes, and come back and study the passages that we're going to share in this teaching today. So go ahead, grab your Bible or your favorite app and prepare to journey with me today as we begin in Psalm 23, verse number 5. And today we are concluding our series on the Holy Spirit. That is, unless the Holy Spirit directs me otherwise. So as you grab those things right now, let's pray. Father, thank you so much for being the incredible God that you are in our lives. Thank you for new mercy. It's new day by day and morning by morning. God, be our guide through this message and touch us and teach us with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost that lives on the inside. We need you, Lord, and we cannot survive one second without you. And so, God, we beseech your presence in Jesus' name, everybody say amen and amen again. Make sure you're in the comments, and we're delighted to have you with us today during this broadcast. Today, I want to begin with a portion of Psalm 23, verse number 5, as we talk about what it means to be anointed. And it reads something like this, Thou anointest my head with oil. That's enough right there. Today, I want to talk about what it means to be anointed, what it means to be anointed by God. Now, the anointing of God is something that takes place internally. It's when God's Holy Spirit gives you insight, ability, stamina, authority, or protection that you don't normally have in order to do a job that he has chosen for you to do. Listen, if you are a believer, you have been anointed by God through the empowering assistance of his precious Holy Spirit. Now look, we're not all anointed to do the same thing. My anointing is to do what I do. Yours is to do what you do. But even though we're not anointed to do the same thing, there is something that God has uniquely gifted you to do. That's right. God's hand rests on your life and he has uniquely equipped you to do something that maybe the average person cannot do. I want to share in this message six principles about God's anointing as we talk about the Holy Spirit and how God uses his spirit to anoint us. Number one, when God appoints me, God anoints me. When God appoints me, God anoints me. You know, I love 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. It says, the one who calls you is faithful and he will do it. How many know God is faithful? And when God calls you, into ministry, into Christianity, he is faithful to give you his spirit to do what he's called you to do. Here's number two. God's anointing makes me a better person. That's why we need the anointing of God. You know, I'm reminded of the story of Samuel. The word of God teaches that then Samuel took oil and poured it on Saul's head and said, God has anointed you to be the leader of his people. God's spirit will come on you in power and you'll speak like a prophet and you'll be changed into a different person. After this happens, do whatever you think is best because God will be with you. That's 1 Samuel 10, verse 1, verse 6 and 7. When God's power comes on you, he equips you to move in a way that will be blessed. Here's number three, and I'm moving fast today. God's anointing makes difficult tasks easier tasks. His anointing makes those things that are difficult much easier. 
Ephesians 3 and 16 says, from his unlimited resources, God will give you mighty inner strength through his Holy Spirit. It's from his unlimited resources that God will give you mighty and inner strength through the Holy Spirit. He makes things easier because of his strength, the anointing of God through the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of us. Maybe that's why Paul said in Philippians 4.13, I can do everything with the help of Christ. Watch this who gives me the strength that I need. Anybody in the comments section can testify. God gives you his strength through his anointing. Here's number four, church. God's anointing makes the impossible possible. Now, Jesus says in Luke 18 and 27, what is impossible for men is possible with God. You need to understand what Paul says to us in Ephesians 3 and 20, God's power at work within us is able to accomplish in, to infinitely more than we could ever dare to ask or even imagine. God's spirit, the anointing of God, makes the impossible possible. Here's number five. God anoints my life to bless others. God anoints my life to bless others. God doesn't give us his anointing just to hoard it or to broadcast it or to make profit off of it, but he anoints us that we might in turn help other people. Now, I love what Isaiah said and Jesus quoted it as well. The spirit of the Lord is on me and he has anointed me to bring good news to the suffering and afflicted. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted, to announce freedom to captives and to open the eyes of the blind. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of God's favor to them has come, to tell all who mourn that God will give beauty for ashes, joy instead of mourning, and praise instead of heaviness. That's Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. Go back and read through that and look at some of the many things that God has anointed you to help other people with. You might even find your purpose in Isaiah 61, verse 1 through 3. I challenge you to do that this week. Finally, family, for every new challenge, I need a fresh anointing. Oh, somebody ought to type that in. I need a fresh anointing. For every new challenge, I need a fresh anointing. I love the word of God that says, sow new seeds of righteousness and you'll reap the fruit of my love and break up your old hardened ground. It's time to turn to me and seek the Lord. Then I'll come and shower new blessings on you. In that book of Hosea chapter 10, verse number 12, they understood we can't do new things without a new anointing in our lives at work. Now, you might be saying, well, pastor, I don't feel like I have an anointing to do anything. Well, it might be found in James 4 and 2, why you feel that way. Because James says that you don't have because you don't ask of God. I'm here to tell you that whatever you ask of God in faith, according to his will and his word, God will give it to you just like that. Do you want to be anointed? Hey, listen, I've given you six principles. This wasn't a long message, but it's a strong message. Six principles that can change your life as you understand how God's anointing works in your life. I want to pray with you right now. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you've never been born again, hey, I want you to know Jesus died on Calvary's cross to set you free. That blood that rushed from Emmanuel's veins was for sinners like you and me. And then he died on that cross. He went down into that tomb. But early Sunday morning, he got up and he told his disciples during those 40 days that he labored and loved on them prior to going back to his seat in heaven, that the Holy Spirit was going to come down and take his place. That's the anointing of God that releases all six of those principles in your life. If you want it, he wants you to have it. If you want to be saved, he wants to save you. 
there's a place called heaven and eternity where <laughs> there will be no more struggles and strife. But you can trust God with your life now and live with God forever. If you want to be saved, if you want to be born again, I want you to put one, the number one in the comments right now, wherever you may be viewing this message, put the number one. If you want to be saved, if you want to be born again, if you want to be sure that your life is right with God. Hey, and I want everybody to pray this prayer with me right now as we thank God for souls being one into the kingdom. Father, come into my heart. I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I confess my sins. I confess you as my Savior. I repent of all of my sins. Come into my heart. Be my king. I'll live for you forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if you prayed that prayer for the very first time, please, I beseech you, go to our website. Let us know that you just came to Christ. I have a very special gift for you. It's called 30 Days with Jesus. It is a 30-day devotional. It's an ebook you can download. It is absolutely free, no charge. And it will walk you through your first 30 days of prayer time, of study and meditation as a new believer. It's free to anybody that wants it. Those of you that have been walking with the Lord for a while, go get it. We'd love for you to read it. It was written by Lady B and myself, and it's designed to bless your life. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your love. We love you so much. We pray that this is the best week of your life as you allow God's anointing to lead you, guide you, direct you, protect you, and take over your whole life. In Jesus' name, amen.